I am a doctor. I have graduated around three years ago. However, in the last year, I had to prepare for at least three important exams in my life. Unfortunately, not all of us know how to study. Even more, I was shocked when I realized that most of the learning strategies that we use are not effective, and the effective ones are not intuitive. So, I'm going to extract the main points of the first chapter of the book Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. As a friend, I highly recommend you to read this book, because it is absolutely worthy. I hope this video could help you with some ideas to shape your learning process. So, without any further ado, let's start it. The first chapter is called Learning is Misunderstood. The main lesson I have learned is retrieval as a technique for learning something. But what is learning? According to the authors, learning is the acquisition of knowledge and skills ready to use to solve problems and deal with opportunities. It requires memory to use the knowledge instantly or when needed, which could be later. New learning requires a new set of knowledge, but when we know that we have mastered a topic, we know it when we have ready knowledge and we understand how to use it. So we became capable when we can create a mental model and use it to reason, solve and create. So how we master learning? So one of the main techniques is through retrieval. Retrieval is strength neural pathways and retrieval routes in our brains so we can learn as much as we want since every time we are learning something new our brain changes i was very impressed about that i was aware that children has a great neuroplasticity they learn so fast and so quickly however as adults we also have an infinite potential to learn our brains are changing so retrieval involves period practice, so we can strengthen our memory and keep what we have learned fresh. It also interrupts the process of forgetting and make it easy to recall what we have learned. So how we do it? We will discuss three ways described in the book. The first one is testing and recall. During testing, we calibrate our knowledge and judgment. When we are able to identify what we know and what we don't know, then we can not overestimate our mastery. We can focus our study on our weak points. And at some extent, we avoid overestimating how much we know. They described three types of knowns. The known knowns, the things that we know we know, the known unknowns, things that we know we don't know, and the unknowns unknowns, things we don't know we don't know. <laughs> it sounds quite tricky, isn't it? When we recall, we reconsolidate our memory. How we do it? Express material in your own words, connect it with things you already know, and look for examples outside the text. Try to do your best in order to make the knowledge yours. There is a huge don't do in this part of the book, and that is do not reread. When we are rereading something, it gives us a false illusion of knowing. When you start to remember things, that sense of familiarity unfortunately gives you the wrong impression of how, of how much you know. So the results are not durable, and this method is very time consuming and have shown known benefits. It is true that sometimes we need to review some topics since the lapse of time make us forget concepts. However, that is a way to refresh some knowledge rather than a main strategy. The second one is go wide. Try to use all your attitudes and be as resourcefulness as possible. Make the concepts that you are learning matter to you. Compare something abstract in something concrete and personal. Do not limit your learning process to some instructions or styles. 
try to use different resources that you have in order to make the best of your learning session. Put the knowledge that you are learning into a bigger concept. Try to put it into a larger concept and try to identify the underlying principles and rules. So then you can use the same approach in unfamiliar situations. The third one might seem no intuitive at all, and it is to make it affordable. Myself, as any other student, wants to make our study session as smooth as possible, as effortless as it can be. However, I always remember one of my Japanese teachers. He always said the things that are easy to learn are also easy to forget. So within the book, they explain that the more effortful the learning, the stronger the benefit. They explain that the effortful learning become more durable and deeper. So how we do it? One technique is through a space repetition. There are tons of videos in YouTube about this topic, and I truly suggest to see some of them. Letting ourselves the chance to start to forget things, and then just before the big concept is out of us, catching it up and reinforce that neural pathway is really, really interesting. And there is a beauty in failure. And actually, I agree. When studying, all the things that we cannot remember or haven't learned it become a source of information. Those are the things in which we can focus trying to dig deeper, approaching with a different strategy, approaching something with a different strategy, or even take it as a starting point to bridge into advanced learning. When we correct our mistakes, we are given us the possibility to even go further in our learning process. So being aware of our mistakes or failures became a possibility to learn even better. So at the end, in order to master complex concepts, or abilities. Try to extract the key ideas of a new material, organize it in a mental model, and then connect those models with previous knowledge. I hope this video is useful. Please leave a like when leaving. This is the first out of nine videos of the lesson I have learned while reading the book. Make it a stick. The science of successful learning plan is to go through each chapter of the book and share some lessons that I have learned from them, and then move to another book. Until then, see you in the next video.